Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Positive Powerful Pro Wrestling Podcast. Change the name every single week because I don't really know what we're calling it, but we are calling it the PWP, and now we can just do easy introductions because you know Scott, you know Joey, they have joined me again. We're all very tired because we're all at UPW show last night and all got in. Well, you got in. What time did you get him in? I got in at like two, so you must have got in and gone three, surely. Yeah, it was about 3.35. Yeah. And then by the time you get a shower, and I'm OCD, so I got to clean that <laughs> night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm starting to like oh, yeah. put stuff away. But, um, yeah, so we've had a few hours. Yeah, you've had a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I've got some caffeine in. I'm ready to go. Let's talk some wrestling. That's it. Keep it positive. Well, I, just think, I just think because, like, we do have this... Like anyone can do a podcast because we do have this niche where we all literally wrestled on the same show last night. Oh yeah, we may actually as you pin that out as well. It should be up by the time most people hear this. It'll be up this weekend. It's UPW Ultimate Pro Wrestling. Go to their website. Make sure there's a link in the description below. Uh, sign up to the UPW Plus service and you can see well you can basically see all of us taking on Danhausen. I mean that's essentially what happened. But there's lots of twists and turns. And if you do want to get into that product, not the worst time to get into it. But we shall leave it there. Yeah. I don't want one day we should just do a whole podcast it's about our stupid wrestling travels yeah, we just, should <laughs> just we got mention that but for now again look SummerSlam was a, a good old week ago but i think we all mostly agreed that it was a pretty good pay-per-view it's kind of weird actually because in the aftermath I, and I do understand this i'm well actually no i'm not the same but i do understand most people watch the thing and they get really excited you have 24 hours of sort of joy and then people get a little bit more well some people get assholey about it but some I, the, to respect some people they do get a little bit more they think about it or maybe i didn't like this as much maybe yeah. they didn't like that as much but now things have calmed down i think i'm pretty much like there was not one thing on there that in hindsight i would have changed I like the fact it was an ankle heavy show. I like the fact we changed a lot of the titles. Uh, I really enjoyed everything with Roman Reigns in the in, in the main event. I just thought, well, by the end of it, look, can they be paced better? Of course they can. Are there too many video packages? Yes, but I think that's more of a look. When I watch Netflix these days in the middle of a movie, here's an advert. Do you know what I mean? It's just that's just the way of the world, sadly. So I don't think we should. Because they obviously do ups and downs on what culture, and people say, oh, Simon, you should criticize the pacing and the adverts. I'm like, well, just feels like a waste of time. That feels like going into a pizza restaurant, then getting mad you got given pizza. It's yeah. like, well, I, knew, I knew it was going to happen. I'd rather focus on actually the new stuff they're giving me. But uh, overall, I thought a really good show. And in terms of bashing Berlin being like three weeks away, yeah, I think it ticked a lot of boxes and kept the momentum going, to be honest. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and obviously with the predictions, we were kind of, we oh, were yeah. guessing it like tag matches that are going to go into Berlin and all these kind of things. I mean, I think we got more story than we probably anticipated and it was slightly different yeah i'd say it was slightly different uh but no i i thought SummerSlam was brilliant like uh we were talking about it on the way to the to the show yesterday was the pre-show because they've removed the match it's not appointment viewing you don't have to watch it yeah. it's such a nice thing i had i had all eight and a half hours of summer slam playing yeah <laughs> and i watched all of it but obviously the pre-show and the post-show you just kind of keep an eye and you just kind of go about whatever you're doing but there's something quite relaxing about it because they keep showing you things like, I don't know, Cleveland and what's going on in Cleveland. And here's a new guy to narrate. They're like, here's John Stamos to narrate yeah. how you walk around Cleveland. And I'm like, that's interesting. So like, it's enough to keep you interested, <laughs> but it's not like you have to see it. Whereas when they put a match, it's almost like you had to see it. Yeah. Which made you kind of think, oh, how, I, how can I get through this much content? Whereas now they're giving you more content, but it's like, you don't have to watch it. Yeah. Because... I mean, NFL do it. They do six hours of yeah, shows. They do. I mean, it, kind of, it kind of gives it that festival vibe as well, yeah. doesn't it? Like you say, you can just pop it on in the background, gives you the atmosphere, get, get, get again, gets you ready. Yeah. I mean, it's a bit different because obviously we stay up for it. Like in America, obviously, they're probably like going about their day, like making dinner and stuff while it's on. <laughs> Whereas for us, I find it a little bit more relieving to when you have to stay up, you can pop it on. It's already getting you in the mood. Like, because back in the day, we used to sit, like, like I'd either have a nap before the show now i feel like i can't have a nap because i want to see the pre-show even though nothing crazy is going to happen i want to see it and also it gets you tuned into the show itself whereas like before i try and find something to watch before it started just to, to keep me awake yeah, yeah, yeah. whereas now it's just, yeah, it's just there i could pop it on i'm already in the mood and then one it flew by yeah it did. like it's three hours but like three hours flew by and all of a sudden jelly roll singing 
<laughs> Actually, they handle jelly, jelly Roll very well. I do not like concerts at wrestling shows, even when yeah. it's bands that I like. I just don't want it. That's not what I'm watching wrestling for. But yeah. I thought coming here, getting him to do the, um, uh, the it wasn't the national anthem, it was America the Beautiful. No, it wasn't that either. I can't remember now. I but get it, confused I thought, at what's what as well with the America the Beautiful, I think it was. Okay. I thought that's what they did, or whatever it was. But the fact that they did that, I thought that was a really smart integration. The only thing, it's not even a problem with the pre-show because I don't care. I think it's more I miss my younger days because I'm getting older and will be dead soon. <laughs> it's such a shame that they, and it's a social media problem too. It's such a shame that you get all the videos so soon before the event. Like, I don't really, I, I remember watching pay-per-views back in the day and the video was like, oh, what's the video? <laughs> the video's going to be great. Now I get it. You need to advertise the thing. And it, it, it takes away the... But I guess we just you just said it, Joey, there. You get in, you get involved and you get hyped up over a longer period yep. as opposed to doing the roller coaster. Oh, the video was amazing. Here we go. Oh, the video was amazing. But I do yeah. miss that. And that's something. And also, I used to... It's funny. I used to miss the individual sets, but now they've gone the other way and just gone screw sets. I actually think... I just like the fact when they... No halfway house, right? I like the fact they've gone, nope, we're in a no set era. And I actually quite like it. I think it makes it look fresh and it makes it, it, makes it look original. But uh, I, I just realized, given that we mentioned the predictions i'm never gonna be able to find this now but obviously we should do the leaderboard so i'm just gonna get my yeah. phone up here because i don't I know have... the exact things but i'm fairly sure i did not win no because <laughs> i did go for solo <laughs> to win the world title <laughs> it was i love bold. it i love it and he was nowhere near winning it like there wasn't even a moment where i thought he's going he's going to win right there it is so after SummerSlam, predictions number one in august on august the night that was recording this it's not so it's pretty close scott you got four right joe you got four right and i got six right which I will no. massively take because that number is drastically going to go downhill over there. <laughs> <laughs> Bash at Berlin, I, w I, I won't get right at all. But <laughs> I think, yeah, I think the coolest thing with me is, again, because the one I got wrong essentially was Damien Priest. I got mm. it in my head that we're going to get Damien Priest, get his big win, and then we can go on to Bash at Berlin and, and Gunther in his fake hometown can, can get the win there. <laughs> Whereas instead what we're doing is Randy Orton versus Gunther, which I think is ace. Because again, mm. tying it into predictions... I have, look, Gunther will win, right? Because it would be insane. But I have that 1% where I'm like, but will he win? Because how, I don't believe after the King of the Ring, also fair play to WWE, worked my ass. I thought that whole fake pin accident, you know, one, two, shoulder up was mm. all just, ah, mistake, it's fine, well worked. Nope, absolutely, they thought about this. But I don't think Randy Orton, we'll call that a clean victory for lack of a better term. I don't think Randy Orton is going to get another loss like that so i don't know so i think gunther will win but i actually have no clue how they're going to beat him randy orton and i think that's tremendous like they put me in a position where i'm convinced they're going to do shenanigans but i can't even figure out what the shenanigans are going to be yeah i, I honestly that that match like you said it is it is predictable I'll probably go Randy Orton. <laughs> um yeah i don't know it, it is predictable but i don't know it's it's Austria, like you said, fake hometown, fake country even. And um, it, it, well, not Austria, <laughs> Germany, but he's from Austria. Yeah, I, yeah I, I think it's such a huge match, though. For If you think about Germany haven't had a pay-per-view. No. I mean, to me, Randy Orton's the kind of... Stick Randy in the main event in yeah. any country in the world that isn't America. Yeah, yeah. And they'll go, oh, my God, it's Randy. Like, this is this is WWE yeah. Like, yeah. mad. Yeah. So I think it's kind of a stroke of genius to kind of tie it back in from two months ago. And do it in Germany. Yeah. And I think Germany are going to be like, oh my God, who do we support? Because I love Randy. I love yeah. I love Gunther. And they're just going to, I don't know. It just seems like such a, it's almost like a house show main event, but it, it feels like a a big match for Germany that makes you not feel like, do you remember when you were a kid and we get like one night only or something? Yeah. And all the match, there was never a title change. And every match you're <laughs> kind of like, only. <laughs> yeah, you're like, why are like six of the people not here? Yeah. Like, you know, they just haven't done it. Whereas I think the minute you put Randy in the main, they go, oh my God, they're giving us yeah. the, the big, the big show yeah uh even if it's not not the big show yeah 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 or white but yeah. i mean the big show maybe it will be the big show it's time <laughs> it's time it's time for the return now i think that is probably the biggest unspoken plus of the shift in eras yeah. do you remember there was that run when pay-per-views raw and smackdown were actually more interesting than pay-per-views yeah it was like now you just get random random match honestly sometimes people post matches on the internet I'm like i was watching wwe like that match did not happen you've made up that graphic and you look it up be like that match actually happened and i watched that event because they yeah. were just so 
they were so formulaic yeah. whereas now again we'll, we'll call them the b shows although i think that term is slightly unfair these days even they they all just it's like Sami Zayn and roman reigns from elimination chamber 2023 right you actually can convince yourself that something huge is going to happen because they make the the gravitas so big yeah. so yeah no, I, i'm really excited about it i think it's it, gonna i think the atmosphere is gonna be awesome even like uh, you talk about the gravitas and they build it like solo should have won the world title at SummerSlam. <laughs> Like, I, I was so involved in this. They're going to give the bloodline everything. Yeah. And then everyone thought Jacob Fatu had hurt his leg. So I'm just saying, yeah. you know, they did, they did a very good job with that. Well, I still, I can't, well, I, look, I, I think it, and I think the walking boot was all planned and yeah. stuff from, from the beginning, but I'm, I'm still not sure. And again, that's another huge tick for this era of WWE. Mm. Look at me running around like some nerd trying to figure it out. And I don't know, but it just made sense to me at the time because I get it. Some people were saying, well, actually it makes more sense if Jacob for two is out there. Cause that's why Roman Reigns comes out because it's like a two on one situation. Mm. But no, I think you got to think long term here. I don't want to see Jacob and Roman look at each other for, at least oh, wow. a couple of months. Like, yeah, yeah, you got to hold. Yeah, you that's got, you the one to build to. Definitely. Oh yeah, well, absolutely. That, absolutely. That foot thing was done so well. Yeah. Because even in the moment, I was like, oh, oh no, this is such a shame. Yeah. But for me, what it was was the wrestler stand up, put weight on it, and then scream and fall over. And I was just like, <laughs> I think if I've broken my leg or any, if we've watched football enough, yeah. If someone breaks a leg, what you tend to do is just stand there and stare at it and go. Oh. We need to deal with this. Rather than saying he tried to stand and he was like staggering. It's like that thing when you watch football and you know you kind of know when something's for real or when it's not. So they're not moving. Yeah, like but the ones that are moving around and rolling around are usually not hurt. The ones that stay down very still are the ones that are hurt. So, but I I, I bought into it. I mean, as soon as he did it, because you don't expect uh, wrestlers a lot of the time to take themselves out. Yeah, like, a lot of the time someone's taking them out. But I understand the the theory behind it because they're keeping Jacob super strong. And because he is a bit of a wild card, it kind of makes sense that he takes himself out yeah. by doing a little bit too much and hurting himself. Yeah, well, there's a rumor going around that, again, it's all rumors, always pinch of salt, we don't know. But I liked it. I read it and thought, oh, that's interesting. Like Roman Reigns' big uh, motivation to come back is to turn Jacob Fatu into like an absolute mega, mega superstar. And I was yeah. like, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> let's do yeah. that. Yeah. Sounds like a really good idea. Like sounds like a really good idea. Yeah. And also now, given that Randy Orton is going after Gunther, I presume that the Bloodline Civil War at Survivor Series is going to involve Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns yeah. on the same team. Yeah. I would imagine yeah. they looked at each other. They had a smile. Well, I think that's massive. I mean, we yeah. just had Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah. I, I, I'm talking that kind of I'm Batman Superman levels here. I'm super excited about it. Mm. I think as well, because they are on the same team and because you can... You know, I don't think they need to be friends. That could be the reason that they lose. Maybe Cody and Roman just can't, as WWE will say, coexist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, hate I hate that phrase. I got to get rid of that phrase. It literally doesn't make sense. Like, if, <laughs> if you can't coexist with someone, one of you would vanish into the Phantom Zone. Like, it would be a paradox. <laughs> like, they are existing next to each other. I'm looking at them both. <laughs> they got to change that one. That is stupid wrestling terminology. But no, again, I thought that main event was a lot of people felt like it didn't have the because SummerSlam's a big pay-per-view, right? And they don't feel like Solo is that guy. I, I, I sometimes feel like I'm watching a different show. I think Solo Sako is great. I've yeah. totally bought into him as an asshole because what I like about him, it was, oh, well, he doesn't feel like the real tribal chief. Isn't that the story? I thought the story yeah. was the reason he's being so loud. What I think Cody Rhodes called the rocket, right? When they were doing their thing. Was it little expletive syndrome oh, yeah. isn't that but isn't that basically what solo sokoa is meant to have yeah deep down like i think it's quite deep it's quite nuanced deep down i can't live up to roman reigns's gravitas aura <laughs> as we say in aura. 2024 so what i'll do is i'll hire a bunch of psychopaths and i'll overdo right i think yeah. he's overcompensating and i think if you watch it like that i really like him in this role like genuinely i think it's great yeah, no, that's exactly what it is because you think he's supposed to be an insecure tribal chief. Yeah, yeah. he knows no yeah. one believes it, but he's like, but the loudest person, yeah. he's the loudest person. Yeah, but I, I think he's fine. Like, as a wrestler, I think there's, he's fine. Like, but we we've talked about it in like behind baseball terms. Yeah, even in the last twenty four hours, you don't have to do <laughs> that much. If no. you watch a lot of people, they don't do a lot of much, lot a lot. A lot of the time, it's just the position you're put in. Yeah. So you know, if if Solo's in the next ten main events, yeah. pay per views. And he does the exact same match. By the end of the 10, everyone's going to go, yeah, but he's a main eventer. Yeah. Like I mean, Randy did it for years. Like people were like, oh, he's boring. He only does certain yeah. things. Then it took like five years of him doing that. And everyone went, he's so good. Yeah. <laughs> like it's just, it, I think it's just perception. If, if you put the right people in the right places, 
they'll get the job done. And especially with the experience of doing all these big moments mm-hmm. and all the TV time, he's he, like the speed he's come along. Like he hasn't been wrestling that long. No. And now he's all of a sudden been replacing Roman Reigns. Obviously, mm-hmm. I know like they, they know we're not stupid. They're, mm-hmm. they're like you said, they're doing a version of the tribal chief where he's not trying to be Roman Reigns. He's literally, like you said, an insecure version <laughs> of Roman Reigns mm-hmm. that has to surround himself. But the speed he's gathered the the pace at to become yeah. this guy mm-hmm. is crazy. Like he's already here now. Yeah. Like it didn't take long. And the same thing they're doing with Jacob. Yeah. Like Jacob literally came out of nowhere. Super strong now. Everyone, well, I assume a lot of people like him. I love him. <laughs> and the way they're showing him on TV, he's an animal. Like, yeah. and it's really good. Like the way they're just, they're, they know what they're doing. Like they're putting him in these right places at the right time and they're just building up steam quick. Yeah. And with Solo Sokoa, um, inadvertently, I've critiqued one of his matches. Yes. Inadvertently. <laughs> Or did you fall over and just like shouted when you were falling down? <laughs> ah, and what I say is this is a cl- this is like a like a hook. If you keep listening to the show, yeah, I will eventually tell this story. But yeah. inadvertently, I have critiqued one of his yeah. matches. All right, so we're just gonna leave it out there in the ether. Okay, I'm just gonna, I like it. Honestly, I, I want like people it. to speculate how that's a happened. little sprinkling. Keep listening. You're gonna get some info. You're, you're gonna get it eventually. <laughs> accidentally reviewed Solo's match. And you're, oh, man, I didn't mean, I didn't mean to do that. No, I thought it was, that was a cool ending. Roman Reigns comes back. Everyone goes crazy. What I would, you, you'll, you'll be able to find it if you search social media. I don't care. Oh, of course I care. But no matter, if you're over the age of 25, right, our opinion actually doesn't matter when it comes to wrestling because there is an amazing shot of a kid and he's got ear mufflers on because the SummerSlam was so loud. And when Roman Reigns' music hit, You've never seen someone so happy in all of your life. Yeah. And when you, he must be like eight to 12 years old. When you see a kid do that, you remember, man, all right, who cares about me? Yeah. Who cares? I've had, I've had my time. <laughs> like, just give me whatever I want. And actually it kind of, it's a nice segue because it ties into the CM Punk, uh, Drew McIntyre, Seth Rollins bracelet thing, which yeah. is cause I know it's the vocal minority, but again, we live in the vocal minority yeah. because of, you know, what we do. What a furore that has caused. Like, I, once again, when I was reading all this, I was like, do I live on La La Land? Yeah. I like it. And I'm not saying that you can't take a step back and go, well, it's a bit silly. Everything's yeah. a bit silly. Football is silly when you break it down. A bunch of people running around trying to put a ball in a net. And the net's yeah. only there so the ball doesn't go flying into the crowd. So <laughs> technically, all you're doing is putting it through some posts. Like, it's the stupidest, it's the stupidest <laughs> game ever. But I would much rather... Those people especially give me a full-on story. Just accept it. This thing means everything to me. I can do that. Yeah. Like, I can absolutely do that. And again, I've got a friend of mine. How old are his kids? Probably, again, 8, 10, 12, something like that. And they think this bracelet now is like Thanos's gauntlet, the yeah. Infinity Glove. They cannot get either. Oh, my God. The bracelet. <laughs> they just buy into it. And when you... When you remember that is predominantly what wrestling is aimed at, right? It is. Everyone, very few people do not get into it as a kid. The majority get into it as a kid. It's yeah. like, yeah, that's great. We've got some magical, powerful bracelet that CM Punk loves so much, he will do whatever he has to do to get it back. That's yeah. perfect wrestling for me. Exactly. And also, how many? I feel like there's like action films in the history of the world. That like a guy goes on a rampage, kills like 300 people, and it's all because he needs the note from his daughter or yeah, something. Like, yeah. so, like a bad guy took it. This feels to me kind of like the most obvious. Yeah. So like, true. like John Wick lost his dog, and then like he had four films where he killed 4,000 people. Yeah. Like, and I mean, I mean, that is a step up from a brace there. It's the yeah. actual dog. But I mean, I feel like you always need that kind of. Yeah. And I, I love the fact that when he finally gets it back, yeah. he's going to then start winning matches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it is almost like a power, which um, yeah, it is. I think I'm all for. And do you see the girl that made the bracelet is like on Twitter? Oh, she's loving it, right? Yeah, she's loving it. <laughs> They're like, you're so involved in this story. Yeah. It's just like, well, I didn't expect it. I mean, I watch it with my girlfriend who's like relatively new to wrestling. So she's still kind of picking all this stuff up and she's now invested in the bracelet. <laughs> Like, that's the thing, you know, like literally when we were watching the match, you know, when Seth picked it up and popped it on his wrist. She was like, oh no. Yeah, and I literally, I literally stood up and went, <laughs> Seth's got it on. <laughs> Seth's got it on. Oh, no. Yeah, I was like, here we go. Saying that, I thought that was really like um, nuanced how he did it. Yeah. Because he didn't make a big, it wasn't like a, yeah. you know, thing. It just in the background, he was like, he, he like, went to throw it out the ring and he went, oh, whatever. And he put it on. Yeah. So like, it really was yeah. supposed to be like, he just didn't think about it. Yeah. And didn't realize the powers that come with yeah. it. So. I don't know. I, I thought I, I love it. I think it's it's silliness, but I think there's enough. I don't know. I think we all have things like this that yeah. kind of mean more. Well, it's just sentiment, isn't it? It's yeah. just sentimentality. That's all it is. He exactly. is sentimental towards this bracelet and he hates Drew McIntyre so much that it sends him crazy. Right. Yeah. All right. That's, all right. And it, 
<laughs> and also the story is like, like for example, if I had like a sentimental cup that yeah. I drink out of and Simon, you came over and you drank out of it, but ah, that's, that's my cup. And you're like, oh, no worries. Whereas if someone I really despise, as of last night, Dan Housen, because, <laughs> you know, um, if he comes in and does it, I'm going to be really agitated by the fact he's even near my cup. I don't want him near my cup. So I think I fully understand it. <laughs> yeah. I think I fully get it. I just want to point out that I love that Dan Housen. Just want to throw out there. <laughs> oh, yeah. But again, I, know I do too, by to... the way. I just, it was just, oh, no, no. I, no I tried to, you no, know. I was getting... No, I was doing it. Sto- I was doing it storyline. I was going to tell people to go buy UPW Plus. Let's try to sell it. You ruined it. You gave away. <laughs> oh no! No, I hate him. <laughs> there we go. That's absolutely, absolutely. That's the uh, clip. No, I, I like, I like stupid stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. I really do. I just, I just, stupid is not the right. I mean, stupid is a compliment. Like yeah, yeah. I, I've learned. I learned long ago. I'm still going to do it. But I use words like ridiculous and nonsense. Is positive words to me. Yeah. Like when I'm watching, like Will Ospreay is a nonsense ridiculous wrestler and that's because i'm watching and going how do you make any sense yeah. how do you make yeah. sense do you see brian danielson did the interview rounds uh, yeah. for all in this week and somebody asked him about will osprey and even brian danielson who arguably is the best in-ring worker ever right if you want to yeah. make that argument to me i'll sit down and i'll have that conversation even he was like i was in there with him and i wasn't quite sure how all of this stuff was happening and you guys know you've worked with him and that was before yeah. like we've got super end of level possible Osprey yeah, that we've got yeah. now but everyone says the same thing yeah. like it's just nonsense Don't understand it. So, yeah. Okay. yeah so i need to be careful with those words so just to underline i like all the braces stuff but given so i thought the seth rollins attack on raw by bronson reed was ace oh. as the best angle i think they've done on raw in ages in terms of right let's turn the dial up on this guy Again, rumor, speculation, pinch of salt, we don't know. Apparently, Seth Rollins is a bit banged up. So they did that. So they thought, well, we can give Bronson Breed some heat and we can leave Seth Rollins just a month to rest up on stuff. My point is this. Do we do anything with Drew and Seth? At, uh, sorry, Drew and Punk, at bad, Punk. Uh, for goodness sake, at Bash at Berlin? Or do we hold it off to bad blood? Because again, mm-hmm. it seems I, it has to be a hell in a cell at bad blood. Yeah. I can't believe we're calling a pay-per-view bad blood without going wink, wink, nudge, nudge, a riddle hell in a cell. So do we... So that's going to be in Sept. No, it's October. So that's early October. There yeah. is no pay per view in September, other than the NXT stuff. So let's just say it's September the 9th. It's not October the 9th, Sorry, but can you hold it off eight weeks or so? Or you think that's too much? I don't know. Oh, I, I, th- I think if anyone can, I think WWE can. Yeah, I think, and those two as well. Yeah, and those two. I think the the, the storyline is so deep now. We're so deep in, and they make they do such a good job WWE of keeping it. Like, even if they're not doing it on TV, they'll keep it relevant to us and our eyes. And I think by the time October rolls around, we'll still be ready for it. Right. I think I think, so, I think they'll I, do a good job of just, you know, keeping us up to date with everything. And by the time it's I, there, they'll have us at Fever Peak Pitch ready to go. Yeah. I looked it up. It's 5th of October. So literally two yeah. months, basically. Two months yesterday, essentially, in terms of the cycle of where, yeah. of where we're going to go. And WWE are quite good at kind of changing out the talent for these pay per views mm. now, aren't they? Like, yeah, yeah. there was almost like a sack, sma- uh, SummerSlam crew, yeah, but it was different to, for example, the France crew. Like, Jey Uso was on like a pay per view, then he was just nowhere to be yeah. seen, then he was on a pay per view. So, I feel like, and I think AJ's coming back as of today, yeah, and so is Roman. That's the rumor. TV, yeah. Roman and AJ, and so yeah. And it's weird because like AJ did the France match, and then he's just kind of, yeah, he was gone from him before, and then he's gone again. Is there a reason but for that? I, 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 tell you the, I, I tell you the reason. This makes perfect sense, right? Let's just put ourselves in AJ Styles' shoes, right? You went out of your way to fake a retirement, to bludgeon this man, and you still lost? you got to <laughs> yeah. take some time off. you got to take yeah. some time off to rethink your life. You've totally screwed up. You've totally... You, I like the you idea. made all these moral choices, and it was a total mistake. Absolutely I love, total mistake. I love the idea that he comes back tonight and he does the fake retirement again to try and get another thing. <laughs> like, it's his get... only move now. He's yeah, like, so that got... worked last time. I'm going to try it for something else. I wonder if they keep him as a heel. I don't know. It depends who he's going to work, of course. But I wonder. I guess you don't. You don't need. You got Cody and Roman on SmackDown, so you actually mm. probably do need more heels at the moment. Also, yeah. I, I quite like AJ Styles as a heel. I think just because I'm so used to him as a face, even though he's played heel so many times, I don't know. Yeah. I find something still quite quaint about AJ Styles. AJ Styles yeah. playing the heel. I, Bash at Berlin. Then what is the card going to be? So we got Gunther versus Randy. We right. know that much. We're not going to do Sami Zayn versus Braun Breaker because that's on Raw this week or next week. That's two out of three mm-hmm. falls. So I would imagine as well. Here's my prediction. Does not count, by the way. It's a pay-per-view only, only event. 
But I assume the only reason they're doing two out of three falls is because Bron Breaker is going to win two falls straight, which they never do. And that would be really cool. Yeah. My guess. Yeah. That's my guess. But so the Intercontinental title's off. I don't foresee Logan Paul being in Germany. So I don't see a, a US title match. So let's say they do five matches, right? Five matches is their, is their key. You've got Randy Orton versus Gunther. What else do we do? Is it a tag team heavy show? I don't know. I can't figure it out. Is I, I feel like it's the time it? for the Wyatt Six to have some kind of pay-per-view because yeah. it's only been Raw-based really up till now. They almost kind of killed off uh, Gable and the Creeds this yeah. week. But the thing is, do you know why I like the fact that Chad Gable got pinned, right? The Wyatts have made it clear, especially Bo Dallas, if you screw over your family, we hate you. Doesn't matter. Heel, face, whatever. That's why I like the fact they're, they're pinned Chad Gable. Because now I think Chad Gable can become evil, super mad Chad Gable and start winning. Because yeah. the Wyatts, have, they've got their uh, blood, whatever the right word would be. You know, they've got their prize. They've got their reward. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could do Chad versus Bo Dallas. But then Bo Dallas would have to lose. Do you know what I mean? I can't figure out what the card's going to be. I have absolutely I, no idea. I think with Bad Blood as well, because of the gimmick, like you said, I think you've got you've got Drew and Punk. Um, you've got potentially Roma, Roman and Solo at that one. You've got Rhea and Liv, and you've got Dom and Priest. So, so it's more the... the well, summer, Finn, Finn and Priest, sorry. It's more the Summer Sam crew. So I guess this is the one, like you said, yeah, it's, that, the opposite. it's the in-between. But like you said, because the comments are going to go crazy because you said Logan Paul's not doing it, so there's no US title. But LA Knight is the US title holder. That's a very good point. So, sorry, what I meant by that was they won't do the rematch. You're right, you they may just do a brand new feud. That's very true. Yeah, yes. AJ. Could it be AJ and LA Knight? They go back to Mania and stuff. That's true. I think it's a bit mm. hashing the old stuff. But it's, again, like I said about Germany... Is that they go, oh my God, we get a US title match and we get AJ Styles. It's almost like what they did with France with AJ and what they did with Randy. Yeah, yeah maybe, that's fair. Maybe something like that. And then maybe you get the mixed tag with um, Liv and Dom and maybe Rhea and... Yeah. Right, that that is genius. That is genius because I... You have a pay-per-view called Bad Blood. Mm. You have to do Liv the and singles. Rhea, the second match there. And you have to do Damian Priest versus Finn Balor. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You cannot have, I don't care. I know it's just a name, but I like it when names mean something. And you then you have Punk and Drew. Yeah. You have to do those things on Bad Blood because then you can start having more fun with titles because you right. can be like, hee hee, look what we did. But that's so true. If you do, so what is it? So it's Dominic and Liv versus the Terrible Twins at Bash at Berlin, not only is that a cool gimmick match, because you rarely see mixed tag matches in WWE anymore, it also, I think, makes, uh, again, I hate the term, but I'm going to use it, that B paper, you gives it a bit more oomph. Because, yeah. oh, well, that's cool, that's different. I like AJ versus... The only thing with AJ versus LA Knight is that AJ lost at WrestleMania. Yeah, it does, it, I but don't think any lost at, against uh, Cody. Uh, someone who will be there is, I think, Cody. I think Cody goes to every single... Yeah. So yeah. do they just run the solo match back? But... I don't know. Oh, that's interesting. All I'd right, so, a, okay, let Yeah, go on. So go on. You go, you go, you go. I was going to say, I'd like something out of left field and uh, the, uh, I don't know what they call him, the irresistible Tama, ta Tango Loga? Tango Loga? Oh, yeah, yeah. Call him. yeah. <laughs> I want him and his eye patch against Cody Rhodes in the actual main. Oh, okay. above, above, above Gunther and Randy, I want <laughs> the infamous Tango Loa walking out there with the eye patch. Big entrance. Dude, I'm, I'm just going to say it. Goodbye comments. I love Tango Loa. I love the mm. fact he went to slam Cody into the turnbuckle and totally missed. Do you want to know why? Because we've got to that part of, of today's eye patch proceedings. You can make a claim that the reason he couldn't do it is because he had no peripheral vision because his eye patch. So actually, he is the yeah. greatest worker on that roster because yeah. he even said, Cody, I've got to miss the turnbuckle. I've only got one eye. <laughs> and he would be 100% correct. I haven't got an eye patch wrestler for today. Hang on. I'm looking it up now. WWE. Sorry. Wrestler. As wrestlers as well, we all know the one where it goes, that doesn't make sense, but it's always something like, <laughs> you know, don't lift me or something. Yeah. I like the fact that he's standing there. He's nothing to do with the match except for that one moment. He yeah. goes, sorry, but I can't slam you directly into the corner because I've only got one eye. That was his input. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, but I'm there at the gorilla and they're going through it again. He's like, remember, I'm not going directly into the corner because that's the really important part of this. So the problem with trying to find eye patch wrestlers is AEW has had so many eye patch wrestlers the last five <laughs> years. I can't, I can't find one. Did Claudio? Uh, that that is not. Now that's all right. I, I'll put the picture up. Uh, uh, Cesaro, because that is a WWF shot. Once wore an eye patch. Do you remember that? Why was he wearing an eye patch? I don't remember that. At all. Hang on. I was about to say eye is, injury like Rocky forces. Gimmick that he has. Rocky Romero. That's Rocky true. Romero but he's, 
He does, but I, I don't want new wrestlers, man. I want classics. I really wanted somebody from the 80s, but I can't find one, so I'm putting Cesaro in yeah. there today. Uh, in WCW, <laughs> was it Scotty Riggs? Yeah, yeah. So, well, Scotty yeah, Riggs, but Scotty Riggs? Yeah, I was I getting mixed. I don't get mixed up, but like I think of Scotty Riggs and the one we did last week, uh, Lafitte. Yeah, I get them kind of. Not well, mixed, maybe that's because very, like, maybe that's because he, he wore an eye patch. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's the issue here. <laughs> long, uh, long wet hair eye patch. Yeah, pretty much. Mid-90s. So he, did, he didn't have. He didn't have an eye. Well, I guess he technically did have an eye patch because he had that. He had a funky eye. I don't know why he had that funky eye. Right. No, there he is wearing an eye patch. That's much better. Scotty Riggs, welcome to the eye patch hall <laughs> of fame. You're in. Congratulations. As, as, right, as a fellow go. one-eyed wrestler, I know these things. Yeah. yeah, you do. You should really be the spokesperson for this. <laughs> I don't know why I took over. Right, okay. So we've got Randy versus Gunther, world heavyweight title. We're doing the mixed tag. Let's just throw LA Knight and AJ Styles in there for United States Championship because I can't think of anybody else. <laughs> and I would like that. And I think AJ is in a place in his career now where he can lose and lose and lose. Who cares, man? One of the best. It pro- well, top five maybe of yeah. all time. And then well, surely we're doing something with the tag belts, with the bloodline. Oh, could, gonna... could you do Jacob and Tamatonga versus Roman and Cody? Or is that way too early? Am I going too, that's too crazy, that, right? Yeah, I think. That's too much, yeah. <laughs> It would be very good. I'd be very happy. Yeah. I wonder if it's the Raw titles because you get maybe it's the Judgment uh, Judgment Judgment side, like the Judgment Day heavy show. Oh, versus so you, Sammy and Jay. Yeah, and that's a, again. It feels like a house show match, and it's almost maybe a way of getting Sammy and Jay on the same show for a night as Solo Cody and Jacob and all that. Maybe at the end of the night, so uh, <clears throat> Jacob Tangaloa and Tamatonga are all beating down Cody after another loss. And instead of Roman making a save, it's Jay and Sammy. Yeah, true. And it's their first kind of mix back into that that fold. Maybe yeah. I don't know. So, so is Cody in a match then, or just getting involved? I think he. I think him and Solo they might run that back. They could do to go again. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, well, a you, big match you can would be, do because would be to put Sammy and Jay with him <clears> against <throat> Jacob Tamer and or ja- Jacob I, Tamer and Solo. Yeah. I think I think you want to hold that for Survivor. Any any well for me personally, I'd hold, I want to hold any team till Survivor yeah. Series, even though I just did the opposite. Now I like I think Jey Uso and Sami Zayn taking on um, the Judgment Day for those titles. That's really really good. They should yeah, absolutely yeah. do that. And then that's what uh, am I getting this right? Yeah, that's why Damian Priest and Finn Balor can be kept separate from yeah. their mixed tag because you got to deal with that stuff. Okay, but then. If if Liv Morgan is not defending her title, then Nia Jax probably has to defend her title. So mm-hmm. you just run the Bailey match back because that was oh no, it wasn't cut and dry. Tiffany Stratton screwed them over, so you absolutely yeah. could run that back and be like, okay, so that's five. Yeah, that, and they do do they do do five. Yeah, yeah. Cards, especially in like Europe and places. Like I wonder if it's a tag match that women's one and it's uh, Naomi with Bailey to kind of start the Naomi Bailey feud that's separate to Nia. Mm. Well, Naomi buddied up with Bianca oh, yeah. and Jade again to who the hell were they taking on? Who were they for? Oh no, Blair, Blair Davenport and the uh, and tag. Yeah, yeah. So you probably can do that as well because then you yeah. get them on the show too, which I think is pretty good. And that just means that we don't have the bloodline defending their titles, which they don't need to because they can yeah. get involved with Sami Zayn and Jey Uso should you want to do that. Yeah. And then Roman Reigns can start recruiting his boys. So yeah, that's six matches. I think that's probably what, and the Intercontinental title Maybe is not going to be on it. Versus Bron because he, of Elia has Europe. To, yeah, and, you're right. Yeah. But but now we've got seven matches, and this is not yeah. what WWE does on PA. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it. So just to make make it very 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 clear, main event: Gunther Randy Orton. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna get some of this wrong, so you're gonna have to correct me. US title: AJ Styles versus LA Knight. That one doesn't feel realistic to me anymore. I think we've gone way off piste. Um, Raw Tag Team Champions: Judgment Day versus Sammy and Jay. Yeah. And then yeah. Bailey versus Nia Jax round two. Mm-hmm. Are we are we doing Cody versus Solo round two as well? Yeah, we probably are. I think I you're think right. We have to, yeah. You could also do that in a cage. Yeah, you could do something like a little gimmick. Keep I agree, out. but if, if you're doing Hell in a Cell in October, I don't think they. Yeah, I, think they I think they stay away from that these days. Don't in the rock. They we used to have done that, but I think they've become very regimented with like, no, 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 this can't mean that, and that can't mean this. And then we're doing three way women's match: Bianca. Jade, Naomi versus Blair Davenport and Isla and Alba. And then there was another one. So this is the one that I keep forgetting. What's the other one? Oh, the the mixed tag. Oh, yeah. That's a big old. 
point. And you know, we, we've done eight matches because you've got Ilya Dragunov versus Bron Breaker. <laughs> Ilya Dragunov has to be on the show. Yeah. We'll, we'll put, eight, we'll, we'll put eight, eight matches in the pot and we'll see what happens. If yeah. that happens, congratulations, Berlin. You're having one hell of a show booked by us. <laughs> we're, we're, it's going to be really, really good. I think... Which one would, could you? I, maybe the US title's not defended on it. I don't know. Maybe yeah, we that's the that. one. Because I think you've got to remember as well, they have to fill TV. So, like yeah. you said, next week is Sammy and Bron. There's going to be SmackDown versions of this. So maybe they'll build to, oh, Santos and LA Knight. I think they're slowly oh, kind of oh, building yeah. towards. <clears throat> and you could do that on the night before because yeah, they right. love doing that now. And it is in Berlin, isn't it? It's yeah. at the same place, I think. So you could yeah. do it on SmackDown and then it'd be totally fine. And that and feels also. Get- where Jade and Naomi and all that. Yeah. That feels like that's going to be on the SmackDown the night before, maybe. Yeah, you're right. So there we go. Then we're back down to six matches. Yeah. You could actually even do Bron and Ely. Oh, no, yeah, then, then, yeah that, that's why you justify Bron and Ely on the pay-per-view because they're Raw guys. Yeah. And yeah. You won't be there then. There we go. Okay, I think that's a pretty good card. I think that works. Now, I'm sure there's somebody we've missed out on now that will stop doing this podcast and punch <laughs> ourselves in the face. We're like, oh my gosh, we didn't book. <laughs> we didn't book this guy. I think Cody Solo round two is really smart because... You have Gunther main event, and then you can just make. Well, once again, you can make that match super shenanigan heavy. Yeah, and we don't know. We don't even know if Roman's on that show, right? Maybe he's not going yeah. to Germany. That ha- that has not been confirmed, as far as I know. But yeah. then you can have Sammy and Jay come out to help. Maybe the new tag team champions. Maybe they're not. And then their story leading into Survivor Series in November can be Bloodline versus Bloodline, yeah. which means yeah. that OG Bloodline would actually be Cody, Roman, Jay, Jimmy, and Sami Zayn which would be amazing. Yeah. What a ridiculous five people that is. And Jimmy Uso yeah. needs to come back. I would bring Jimmy Uso back in Germany, much like they did yeah. with um, Tama Tonga in wherever the hell they were. France? France? Yeah, where France, yeah. I Somewhere would bring Jimmy Uso, I would, or on the SmackDown, either one. That's cool. I think comebacks like uh, returns like that are really cool when you do it in countries. Yeah. That, and it, Listen, I love Jimmy Uso. I think he's massively underrated. He will get a bigger pop in Europe just because it's special and fun. And people are like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we get to see it, whereas American audiences get to see it yeah. all the time. All right, uh, the, um, the mixed tag match, I think, that segment on Raw, we talked about the, I was going to call him Jonah. What? Bronson. Bronson. Um... <laughs> <laughs> that guy, that segment. But the Drew, Dom, Liv, Rhea, JD match with Damien in amongst it. Yeah. That segment was so good. It was hot. so hot. Yeah. That match was so Excellent. good. I've never seen someone work as hard as JD did. Yeah. Just, he was, he was almost as sweaty as you last night. He was bumping <laughs> everywhere. <Impossible>. And he, <laughs> yeah, he was, um, when we got in last night, I went, do you guess I'm still sweating? And, um, oh, and, I know that feeling, and it's not nice because <laughs> you just no. can't get away from it. Um, yeah, he was just bumping everywhere, and he was just doing so much. He made Damien look so good. Yeah, and and coming straight off of a title loss, that's almost exactly what Damien needed. Yeah, strong match, strong segment, and I mean, when Rhea came out, the crowd, yeah, and then trying oh, to get what a hero. I, I just saw when I when it finished, I said that segment, and I think Judgment Day have had that ability to have those types yeah. of segments for a year now. Where I remember at the time, just uh, we've watched a couple. We go. It's like the eighties. Like yeah. the crowd are just like it just just sound during the whole segment. Yeah, and you just think, man, it felt just... like the building was vibrating. Yeah, I was. I, just, I thought Raw generally, I thought was really good. And we were talking about on the way home from the show last night. It's something we haven't really talked about since we've been on the show here. Yeah, is the Wyatt Six, and I kind of want to yeah. do a little bit on it because I know that's like <laughs> probably his favorite thing. Like that, you know, week to week is yeah. what he's looking forward to. Yeah, but I thought that outing was unreal. Yeah. Um, I thought the fact that it was like 11 years, same building yeah. for the Wyatt's debut was mad. Like how, you know, yeah. how that kind of stuff happens in wrestling. It always seems to happen. And they're very, very quickly bypassing. There was a lot of struggles. I know they said they had when Bray was doing it was um, jumping from the like supernatural stuff to the, to the ring, to yeah. the real life in ring stuff. And they've done, I think they've done a good job of giving us the scary stuff, but also removing the masks and yeah. making those guys wrestlers yeah. like straight away. Just so we're not expecting it to be like supernatural, supernatural, and then when it comes down to the human element, yeah, it, you, it's hard to bridge that gap. Otherwise, you've got to start dimming the lights and stuff yeah. for the matches, and it gets a bit crazy. Whereas <laughs> the, the fact they can bring it up and no one goes, oh, it's not the the aura's gone. It's like no, it's good, and then the matches are good. Yes, yeah. those three could be running six mans on house shows. Oh yeah, and they could open shows and people go nuts for it. Or even like um, the, the crowd reacted as soon as they take the masks off. Mm. There's like a ooh, like, yeah, like yeah. here we go. And then the, the, the match was great. And then I think um, WWE even put it up in the end. And it was the stuff that happened after they went off the air. 
Yes. Yeah. There's the whole bit where they, they all get in the ring and hug and point to the sky yeah. and they get like the standing ovation. I think, I know they can't because they're trying to give a little bit of supernatural element to it. But if you have that on TV. But the story is also Bo Dallas redeeming his brother, isn't it? Yeah. I think they can because they have told that story on TV. Because that, that, that's essentially like to the crux of it. We're, that's what we're buying into mm. is the, the sentimental element of it all show that stuff on tv because we know they're we know they're wrestlers they're not like these supernatural beings show that element because the fact that nobody's willing to put it up on their instagram Mm. give us that like and also buy in quicker as well well. as we all know i live kayfabe only yeah so i also want to bring up the fact that um people keep saying like oh they walk through gorilla they killed everyone in gorilla how do they get away with it but isn't there a correlation to like adam pierce had that conversation with bo dallas yeah where he was just on his own yeah and ever since then They've come out of Gorilla and they're like booked in matches. Yeah. Like, and he's, you know, really kind of, he puts them in matches. So yeah. there's something to do with Adam Pierce. And I wonder if they're going to bring something in. Yeah. That is maybe Adam Pierce was close to Bray or something like that because yeah. Bo's there and Bo keeps going to him as just normal Bo. Yeah. He's kind of working him a little bit into yeah. like, we're fine. It's not a problem. And then Uncle Howdy wanders out there. Like, <laughs> his little I hand love- going and. I love you've made the story that they murdered a bunch of people, but they're now friends, so it's okay. <laughs> like, well, because Bo walked in their normal clothes and was just like, I didn't mean it. <laughs> yeah. And then Howdy comes out and he's like, ah. <laughs> Yeah, and he's like, well, that wasn't I didn't it mean it. I just think, I love, if you hit the nail on the head, it's the fact we're doing comic books, right? You take the mask off and you're a different person. And people mm. will buy into that. Like, I don't understand why you wouldn't buy into that. We've done it with Batman for years, like, you know, yeah, or yeah. the other way around. He puts the mask on, that's his real person. But that's what worked for me. So when they're in the ring, they take the marks off. They're just going to whip your ass. Yeah. Or maybe they won't sometimes. There's not going to be any. Yeah. I don't. I never really minded the spookiness that much. Again, I've seen kids react to it and they think it's the greatest thing that they've ever seen. Yeah. And I remember when, when Kane used to wrestle uh, in the red light back in 1997. I remember thinking that was the coolest. I was the best thing ever. He's wrestling in dark lights. Then you grow up and oh, everybody hated that. I didn't hate that. I thought it was awesome. But again, there's that childish innocence to it all. But no, they're they're just great. It's one of my favorite things about wrestling because you could only do it in wrestling. It makes no sense whatsoever, but the door, the blue light, again, the mask, the way that people react to them, the atmosphere, the production of it all. I just look forward to seeing it. And I, I get a bit annoyed because they can work anyway, but let's even say they were the worst wrestlers ever. It annoys me when they go, oh man, the entrance is great, but then the bell rings. Mother Hubbard, it wrestling. Sometimes all I need is a good entrance. You can do whatever you want in the ring and I won't care. <laughs> just do some slams and some suplexes and I'll be able to, do you know what I mean? It's just, especially in WWE. And again, I yeah. mean that as a compliment. They're very, very heavy on stories and angles and characters. And that's why I watch it, right? If all of us look, that's not true, actually, because sometimes people do go out there and have New Japan-esque matches, and it's yeah. great. But if they start doing it all the time, I'd be upset. It's like, this is not what I'm watching for. Yeah. Go and go and do a silly entrance right now. How dare you? How <laughs> dare you not not give me that entrance? So, no, I, I like everything with the Wyatt Six. And I don't mind if the, what are they called, American Maid. I don't mm-hmm. mind if they, they beat them. I really don't care. Mm-hmm. I don't think, I think people have forgotten that you can't beat everyone all of the time because... Again, if you did it in real sports, the person's stock goes down. But if we are sitting down there and pretending that it's real sport, people have to lose and people have to win. That doesn't mean yeah. the end of the world. Yeah. Because again, we're all Arsenal fans. Sometimes we lose. It's not like, oh, that's it. It's done. It's over. That's how people react. But it's an emotional thing. And so many times now you see so-and-so lost and then there's a thread somewhere. Oh, they buried him. You just lost a match. Like, let's just wait and see what goes down before yeah. we go anywhere else. To me, a burial would be going way back in time, what they did with Rusev Day, right? Mm -hmm. Rusev Day is super over, and then they went out of their way to, we'll put them in dumb positions so the fans can't even chant for it. That, to me, is is a burial because you actually took away the atmosphere that you had. Losing a match where what we're watching is about win and losing you have to be able to lose unless yeah. you're doing something like uh which look, i don't want to get too off piece here but that was the problem with goldberg right they massively overthought it just have someone beat him like yeah. just you, or, or you can come up look, the cattle prod was stupid but i always thought it's a much cooler story if he had just come across like goldberg time again i'm a comic book guy so to me it's like who beats superman oh my gosh it's a more darker evil version of superman yeah. that's what i would have done i would have started building up another guy that's bigger and stronger and then he which wins and that would have been cool but again that's the, we don't need to book goldberg no, when did he lose 1999 <laughs> <laughs> i don't think that's a 1999 and obviously I, I would book that bret hart 
beat him just because it would have been the of funniest course. thing, funniest thing ever. He still uh, um, Bret but, Hart hates that guy. Like when we watched that WCW thing the other day, he, he, we've heard the same exact story. And he still hates him. And then it went to like Goldberg. He's like, I, it doesn't matter what I say. I can apologize. And he hates me. <laughs> like Brett's I, just like I, I hate Goldberg. <laughs> I really understand it from both points of view because yeah. I can totally understand being Bret Hart and seeing these people go to Saudi Arabia or go in their WrestleMania matches. He must, it must kill him inside. He must be like, man, yeah, yeah. I want to be able to do that. But on the same time, yeah, I have watched Goldberg like almost been in tears apologizing. After a while, you must just be like, I can't do anything else. Yeah, he I'm just sorry. doesn't like me. Yeah, why. I'm sorry. Yeah, ex- that's what it is, right? He doesn't like me and I'm going to have to move on with my life because otherwise I'll drive myself crazy. So I do <laughs> understand it on on both sides of the coin. But uh, no, I think the White Six are great. And mm. yeah, the first time they do something on pay-per-view, maybe it should be a singles match. Bo Dallas versus yeah. Chad Gable. I'll be up for that. I don't, I, don't, yeah. I don't think I mind if Bo Dallas loses. It has to be done in the yeah. right way. It really, yeah. really does. It's very, you've got to be real careful with it. But I think if you can come up with something that, again, emotes, it gets people emotions going. Yeah. I think there's, I, because the whole thing is so damn emotional. Yeah. yeah I, don't mind, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. Again, you've got to come up with something. You've got to believe in it. But well, I believe. I didn't mean it like that, but I'm going to stick with it. You've got to believe in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I agree. Uh, I think as well, the beauty of having those three is they can heat them up a little bit now, show all the cool moves they can do, the style, all that kind of stuff. Then they can almost be the ones that, you know, let's say their next thing is because Dom turned on his family yeah. in the next couple of months, yeah. it gets to that. Like it's Dom, JD and Carlito yeah. against those three. You keep doing it and then you build towards Finn and Howdy, for example. Yeah, that's fun. But you can almost have the three of them keep losing yeah. and Howdy has to come in and clean the mess. Or you can do it the opposite. Whereas, you know, when they do get to Howdy, Howdy gets distracted because of something to do with Bray and yeah. all these kind of things. Yeah. And they're, they're building to a bigger story that he kind of, you know, needs to be liberated or something. Yeah. You know? So, I really like it, but you just said about taking the masks off and comic book guy talking to masks, Lucha Brothers. That you do, there is some kind of news going on right now, all right? Listen, if we're going to read the tea leaves, AEG watch Conan just talk about it openly on his <laughs> podcast. <laughs> so he's going to. It sounds wait, fair play to him. He's got no filter. He doesn't care. Great Hall of Fame speech, though. I enjoyed that for Rey Mysterio. <laughs> It certainly sounds like, yeah, Ray Phoenix and Penta, the Lucha Brothers, are going to WWE. And listen, it's all, once again, we don't know, we don't know. But there's so much smoke, you have to figure that there are super intense conversations going on. And they just recently trademarked for, like, King Fuego or some a name they've used before in the past. So they're making sure they get all those locked into the key, which WWE would tell you to do before yeah. you did sign. And then 24 hours after that, it was PW Insider, to give the right people credit. They ran a report saying WWE is interested in pretty much anyone that's about to become a free agent. And again, speculation-wise, that would be a Daniel Garcia, that would be a Ricky Starks, and probably some other people we don't even know whose contracts are coming due. Daniel Garcia, I think, is probably more of a tennis match right now. But we haven't seen Ricky Starks on TV for almost four months, I don't think it is, if not yeah. longer. And you'd have to imagine maybe that's because they've had the conversation. I'm not re-signing. I want to go to WWE. So, yeah, before the end of the year, we could get like a Radicals situation where three or four guys <laughs> just jump over to WWE, which would be huge. And what I would, if that is going to happen, again... I want wrestlers to go where they can make the most money and have the yeah. most fun. But if during all of that, if Ricochet then would jump to AEW, I think that would be wonderful. I think that is a great ping pong over the next few months that can, like I say, build content, build conversation, and hopefully just continue the the momentum any company does or doesn't have. But yeah, I, I also think the Lucha Brothers in WWE, you never really know with tag teams in WWE. I think that's a fair criticism over the yeah. years mm-hmm. that Vince McMahon wasn't a tag team guy necessarily. But... Even if you look at it from a merchandise point of view, Penta's taunts, the way they look, could yeah. be really fun and it could be really cool. And as fans, it's always fun to see people on the other side because it feels like Christmas. Yeah. Like, how has this happened? It makes no sense. I think they'd be so good as well because WD can rein them in a little bit and be like, yeah. oh, we know you can do this. Let's do this every week and give them little bits. And then yeah. when we get to the pay-per-view, then everyone, like, if I was eight and yeah. Penta and Phoenix were on it, it would be the coolest thing in the world. Yeah. Thing, oh, yeah. You know, yeah, growing up as brothers, like, Hardy Boys or any kind of fake brother, even uh, Undertaker and Kane, you kind of relate to them. I mean, if I saw these two guys looking the way they do and doing the cool things they do, that would have been the coolest thing. And if they sell Penta's mask, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be buying one now. Oh, I'm getting one. I'm getting one. I'm a big fan of those guys in AEW, but I'm ex- I'm excited mm. to see what WWE do with them. Like, yeah. cause, like you said, as a brother tag team, like they are awesome. Yes, and they have very different abilities as well. Like Penta's 
Like, I don't know what you... He's almost like he would be the adversary for Hulk Hogan in 89 or something. Yeah, <laughs> like his character stuff. Like, yeah, I love it. Yeah, I, I can't put my finger on exactly what, like, character-wise, yeah. but he does something. Like, there's something there that you don't... Would you say he has an aura? He has an aura. Right. Like, Cinema, I, I baby. Can't, <laughs> it's just there. Like, whatever he does, it's just there, yeah. and I'm a massive fan. And then Ray Phoenix. Obviously. Might be the best ridiculous yeah. ability like crazy like the, the chemistry between them for the two separate types of characters they are is phenomenal yeah i think daniel garcia might be better suited in AEW just because they've got the ready-made match with mjf mm. and i don't know i think i think he was getting somewhere and i don't want him to lose that steam i think he almost needs to keep going and then in three years time if that's the deal yeah see where he is then but I think Ricky Starks, like you said, I think there's something's already happened in this place where they're just going, we're just not going to put you on TV. And if you go in, you go in, but we're not going to heat you up before you go. Whereas Daniel Garcia, which, they purposely yeah. gave him something. Yeah, which I'm, again, I don't know the ins and outs. We have to make that very clear. But just looking at it on a surface level, I'm totally fine with Ricky Starks saying, I want to leave. And I'm perfectly fine with AW going, well, we're not going to put you on TV because we don't want to give you airtime if you're going to the competition that's just life it's called gardening leave right there are yeah. you, any job in the world they'll say well we can't feed you our secrets because we know you're going to a competitor you have to go so sit somewhere for three months so that when you do go you don't actually know what our up-to-date plans are i think yeah. uh, look, i get why it's interesting i get why it's fun there was that brit baker and mjf and alicia a tout story you know the, mm -hmm. i understand why it's all fun because it's showbiz gossip and there are websites dedicated to this kind of thing but i also think it's the most real world it happens every day yeah. and it's fun yeah. to chat about for a few hours but ultimately i'm like okay people fell out at work yeah <laughs> that's honestly it happens every single it, day. It, yeah yeah it, it's cool to share messages about it and be like oh man more wrestling drama but i can never get in depth with it because i'm like i don't know the story for one and two I, i'm sure in my old when i worked in an office more i'm sure there'll be times when i fell out with someone and that yeah. became the the talk when people are having coffee oh simon fell out with whoever it just that's what people talk about right and yeah. when you do it on a stage where there are quote unquote famous people you know that's the the beginning of the end but uh, no i i always want people to jump ship i want roman reigns to go to AEW because it would break the internet and it would be awesome it's it never gonna happen i want john cena to turn up i want all of this stuff because it would just be Look at Cody. Again, we talked about it last week. Cody at WrestleMania 38, the most surreal, greatest thing of all time because it's just so bizarre that yeah. all this stuff was happening. And actually, speaking of Dynamite, obviously, we, we, we're going to All In as well. You know, Will Ospreay continues to... Uh, sorry, um, MGF continues to have just banger matches all over mm -hmm. the place. It's gone from a guy that rarely wrestled on TV. And of course, we're, we're all familiar with Carl Fletcher, I'd imagine. We must have yeah. all passed yeah. him in our... It is a really nice dude. And in fact, I'm just going to shout him out here as well because when I first got into wrestling, he was one of the first guys that just treated me like a wrestler and not just some YouTuber that was trying to be a wrestler. Yeah. He's a good guy. He's getting, he's getting really, really good too. I mean, he's always really, really good. But now yeah. he's getting superb. So, so that was excellent. And I loved Isla, again, caused a lot of noise on x or whatever we're calling it i love the fact that in 2024 jeff jarrett was in the main event don't care what the ratings say don't care he was great best working punch i've ever seen in my entire life okay. the man is just an absolute joy and to get brian danielson again imagine i don't know i'll go too far back but imagine i try to think of a daniel bryan feud before he left whatever when that we did the stack em and rack em at wrestlemania when it was roman edge and daniel mm. bryan imagine i told you oh yeah in three years you're gonna be main eventing dynamite <laughs> with jeff jarrett in a in a anything goes match that's the most insane thing <laughs> i'd ever heard ever like we you know we'll all forget about what the rating did and this and that but i'll always remember that i got to see it <laughs> that's the most important yeah. thing to me just thought it was a barrel of laughs yeah. No, Jeff is so good. So good. He's so good. So and the good. fact that I love the fact that he's so prominent on that TV. Yeah. Like I'd say he's he's it's gonna take time, but he's approaching how well they did Sting. I think yeah. ADW did such a good job with Sting. Yeah. And kind of how they made him feel like a big deal, but he still was like kind of on TV yeah. every week. So he wasn't like kind of left for pay-per-views. He was always working. Yeah. And they did it right to the end and they gave him the farewell and I liked it. And I think they're gonna do something similar with Jeff. Because when he went there, you'd assume he'd been a producer in WWE yeah. for a while. Or he's a head of booking live events or something. Yeah. And you didn't expect him to kind of be on TV, but I mean, he's on TV. He looks incredible. He does. Like, he's jacked. He's, his in-ring's still good. Yeah. Why not use him? And I like the fact that you're going, you know what, let's use him. And I don't know. I, I think wrestling, because like, uh, wrestling's always had the thing of like age. Right. Like, it's always been a, they, they talk about it like it's a young man's game. Mm. 
But like with acting, they always say like there's no age limit on acting because you can play the role of your age yeah. in anything. And I think yeah. the same goes for wrestling, especially if you can do it at that level still, like he clearly mm. can. You play the role of the, he's the older guy. He can go up against the young guys. It's yeah. almost like the, I think they did it at WWE a lot with the older guys, like the old yellow situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They take them around the back of the woodshed. Yeah, and- yeah, yeah. That's all you think about it. It's like if they booked Harry Potter and they booked a 21 year old to play Dumbledore. Yeah. And it's just like, but they put some, like, they put, <laughs> yeah. what, he's just all kind of yeah. suave. And talking of ages, Simon's just had his 40th birthday, Simon. Do you want to just talk about that? Don't, don't start this. Listen, famous birthdays, take my age <laughs> down. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. I'm embarrassed I'm even on that. No, I get embarrassed because that's my own mental problems. But yeah, <laughs> please reduce my age by three years. This happened last week too. I don't know what I said, but there was at least five or six comics. Wait a minute, how old is Simon? I'm like, damn it. <laughs> and then they went and looked at that stupid website. I'm not 40. You'll know when I'm 40 years old because I have a breakdown. Okay. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> that's when you will know. But you make a great point. If Jeff Jarrett, the same thing, right? If Dumbledore was the main character in Harry Potter, you'd be like, what are you doing? This is a stupid movie. Mm. But- same with Jeff Jack. If Jeff Jack was a champion and main eventing every dynamite, you'd be like, what are you doing? This is mad. You have all this great young talent, but he doesn't. He does. He wasn't on TV for ages. And now they're just using him as a, like you said, the old man veteran catalyst to tell Brian Danielson, dude, man, you ain't taking this worth seriously. I'm going to, I'm going to get you know under your skin to try and, because I know what it takes. I've been there. I've done that. I'm never going to get mad at Jeff Jarrett. And also I imagine that it's Brian Danielson booking his own matches before he semi retires. And I yeah. think all wrestlers, well, it's never going to work with all wrestlers. But if you get to a certain status, I think you should be given the respect of who, how would you like to, like Sting, same thing, right? How would you like to write your your final days? Because especially Brian Danielson, my gosh, you know what I mean? Like, I remember seeing him in Ring of Honor 2000, whenever it was. He's been given so much to wrestling. I think it's nice to to give a little back sometimes. I just do. Definitely. Also, the, the man never wants to win. So I think <laughs> we can allow him to pick what opponents he wants on the way out. And I think, because some people didn't think it was a particularly good go-home show, for, uh, uh, build to dynamite. Uh, I, I can't talk all in. We yeah. still got three weeks. I think we have to allow it to build from this point out. Like, let's judge it on the one before yeah. the actual pay-per-view itself, which will be in Cardiff over here in the UK. So I'm sure they're going to have a hot crowd. And listen, I think that, that card in general is pretty damn good. I mean, Swerve versus Brian, career versus title, that works for me. Osprey versus MGF, that works for me. The Mariah May Tony Storm stuff's built really well. I'm very excited about Mercedes Monet versus Britt Baker because I actually think drama aside and personality aside, I think they're going to mix really well in the ring. Mm. Uh, Chris Statlander versus Willow Nightingale, I'm super pumped for because those two are just absolutely great. And now you've got a trios championship match as well. I'm guessing here, because obviously I had to get through the collision, but it sounds like it's going to be the patriarchy versus the Bang Bang Gang versus the House of Black. How can that not be just an absolutely amazing thing to see live? And then we're probably going to get the Acclaim versus the Bucks versus FTR as well. So we're yeah. getting loads of people on the card. There's the Gauntlet Casino match, which I'm sure is going to get people like... Well, I'm not going to start naming names because I forget, but get more people on the show. Yeah. I actually think it could be better than last year's in terms of... The I know it's not going to have as big of a crowd, but I think in terms of the the kind of happenstance you're going to get, I actually think it could be way not way better, but definitely better for sure. Yeah, I think as well they would have learned a lot from working. Like they 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 hadn't even come to England mm. or the, England UK anywhere, and then they went straight to Wembley. Yeah. Whereas at least this time they're doing the Cardiff show, which they're going to yeah. get a little bit more of a feel. They're here for a little longer, mm. and also they would have learned from that's the only stadium show they've ever done. Yeah. So they'll know like, oh, maybe because they did that short ramp. I wonder if they move back to the long ramp. Do they touch? Because then you can tarp off almost half a stadium using an entrance. Yeah. So people yeah. aren't going, oh, look, there's a there's a big gap there. There's a big gap there. You can always do that. It makes me so mad. So they're going to sell 50,000 tickets and mm. people are like, how disappointing. I'm like, are you, are you? 80,000 last year was an abomination in terms of expectations. That was nuts. That was yeah. like an, an anomaly. That should never have happened. And it's awesome that it did. 50,000 <laughs> tickets. Like, yeah. I, can't, I can't get... The, the, the barrier has been moved too much. 50,000 yeah. tickets will make it one of the biggest wrestling events ever. I think yeah. people have forgotten how many... You know, people have started comparing it to WrestleManias. And it's just like, yeah, but WrestleMania is huge. They yeah. couldn't do... Nobody could do that every single week. And if they ever yeah. do, hell yeah, man. We're on the party train. But I think the the number that Wembley gets needs more respect. 50,000 people at any show is a huge success. And also those mania numbers are inflated. So, you know, like none of these numbers are like 
if it's a legit fifty thousand, most manias are like a legit sixty thousand. Like yeah. they just save that eighty five thousand or whatever. So do you know what I mean? So it's there's too much. Com- there's too many comparison. There are too many comparisons between WWE and AEW. Like let AEW, yeah. it's it's a relatively new company. Yeah. I like, think how long WWE's been running, yeah. how much work they put in, investment years. But all in was to get sell ten thousand tickets. Yeah, and they did it. Yeah, now they're doing five times that yeah. every year. Well, even more than yeah. that last year. And so. making history by doing it at Wembley as well. Like, don't focus yeah. so much on the seats and like how much you sell. Like, they're making history mm. and they're selling a hell of a lot of tickets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's amazing. I think it's great. Like, I really, really do. And if the benefit of selling less tickets is if it does have a WrestleMania type stage, excellent. I've never seen an AW show with yeah. a huge, mm. ridiculous, audacious stage. I like audacious stages. They make yeah. me laugh. So yeah. no, I, I I I think we're gonna have a we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. I think August is gonna be really good, all mm. things considered. And then we'll learn about the AW TV deal and then moving into September, we'll probably have a totally different landscape about what yeah. wrestling is again. And that's awesome because yeah. it gives us loads to talk about. If somebody would like a meltdown anytime soon that's fine as well that always works i'll always take I'll always take a backstage meltdown every now and then um but guys pimp out your social media and stuff and all that crap before we we'll add this one up uh we are tba wrestling on all forms of social media i believe yep. and we also have another podcast called gunners are us uh so oh, yeah, of course, yeah. he's on and off he's uh, i'll say this <laughs> he was he was in america for a long time and he's a very busy busy man i always feel like he's there in spirit but he's there in he's spirit there every in single day. So he's there i am um, no, it's just TBA wrestling. So, um, any of you got anything? No, I think that's good. You've covered it. I yeah. mean, yeah, we've got, we've got all forms of social media. Like you said, Instagram, we've got uh, X. Um, yeah, I try not to use that. It upsets me that. Yeah, it feels weird. That upscares me. Even saying it. I, like... I go on. I send my message and then I'm out these days. Yeah, I can't. I can't handle yeah, it. I can't stay. I don't. I, I don't want to get into it. But you block people nowadays. It doesn't even block them. And these are yeah. big, prominent voices. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, <laughs> make sure you go. I'm going to make sure I put a link down there as well. Yeah, make sure you get UPW Plus. Uh, it's only like five quid or something like that. It's super duper cheap. And again, the, by the time you're hearing this, the show uh, Beach Bash is probably going to be up. If not, it's going to be up by Saturday. So you can watch it this weekend. And you can see us all try and take down Danhausen. And I won't uh, say anything more because I will spoil it. And it's just, just know it's... Well, if you know anything about me, it's exactly what you'd probably expect. Let's just say that and we'll move on very quickly. Otherwise, very depressingly, it's Simon316 everywhere that you need to find me. If you are watching this on YouTube, make sure you share it, subscribe, leave a comment below. Just interact with the video as much as possible because that's what YouTube likes the most. And if you are listening to this on any podcast app, because we should be on them all, give it five stars, leave us as a review as we slowly make our way back into the algorithm. Last week's episode did more than the one before that. So hopefully this one will do more than last week's as uh, Apple Music or Apple Podcasts and Spotify and all those things go, oh, he's actually posting again, which is true but more important than that appreciate your time thank you very much and look going on what we're doing at the moment we probably actually will talk to you next week